great. Although the news that's been coming out is so depressing. And I know I got so many emails about what's happening with Zambia. And uh, a lot of people wanted me to comment on that. Uh, is, is Zambia now, you know, Zai China, Zam, Zam China. <laughs> Actually, you guys, it's not even a funny story. Um, Zambia is the first African nation to become a full Chinese colony. And, you know, we joke about some of these things, but what has happened is really, really tragic. And I warned you guys, I warned you guys this is what was going to happen. But also, this shows you that we're closer and closer to a major global war. Because I told you, the Europeans are not going to just sit back and let China take over Africa. Now, what has happened is that uh, Zambia defaulted on a couple of loans. And so they lost their power company, Zesco, and that has been taken over by the Chinese. Their major national electricity company is now being run by China. Now, if that isn't even worse, uh, they've also lost, a few months ago, they lost their Zambia Broadcasting Corporation. It's called the Zen NBC. I think it's the Zambia National Broadcasting Corporation, which is now fully owned by China. And, you know... The, the government has been denying that this is the case. They've been trying to play cute. They've been trying to play, you know, like everything is okay. But they have actually been in secret talks over how their national electricity company would be taken over. This is crazy. Do you think an African country would be allowed to run China's national electricity company? And, you know, it just shows you that China's neocolonial strategy is reaching ahead. I mean, it's reaching its climax. They've been doing this covert business for so long. And now, you know, they've got their tentacles so deep inside. They've got their tentacles so deep inside that uh, it's going to be hard for some countries to turn back. Now, what's happened is, you know, the whole strategy is they encourage indebtedness. So, hey, they come with the money. They come with the money. They give you, they give you, they give you. Then they, um, once you default, uh, they start to take over strategic assets because of failure of repayment. And you see, what China has done is they have studied countries that are corrupt. They have studied countries that, you know, that are greedy, that have greedy leaders, which is most African nations. And that's why we find most African nations are in this situation. And then they kind of have this, um, their long-term outcome is the effective ownership of commanding heights of the economy. Remember I did that thing on the Seven Mountains Prophecy, um, health, economy, um, etc. You know, media, entertainment. So they come in, they give you a deal you can't refuse. They pour that money on you. They pour that money on you. They pour that money on you. And then all of a sudden, uh, they come collecting. And they're very vicious when they start collecting. And you know what? The, even the Chinese government, they know they actually have a problem in Zambia and other nations. But you know what they said? They were just like, us were protecting the Chinese. If your people cannot negotiate for you, if Zambians cannot look, if the Zambian government and the Zambian politicians cannot look after the entrance of Zambia, that's not our fault. But this is not going to be possible. And you know what? I was doing deeper research into this matter, and it gets even worse. Now, you know, Zambia's president was actually in China last week for the China Africa summit and I'll talk in the future about the 61 billion dollars or 60 billion dollars that the Chinese government allegedly gave to Africa with no strings there ain't no free lunch come on guys there ain't no free lunch and one of the biggest problems with all these deals that China has signed with African governments is we don't know what they've done. We don't know what they've signed away. We don't know the kind of agreements they've made because all of them were done hush-hush and behind the scenes. So all we're being told in Africa and in China is, oh, China's giving Africa money. Oh, you're getting money. Oh, they're funding this. Oh, they're funding that. Oh, they're funding infrastructure projects. But we're not told, okay... Uh, the debt repayment is this percentage, and if you pay, fail to pay this percentage, you know, you're going to be in trouble. We're not told that. We're not told what concessions have been made. In fact, I know this is not about Kenya. Sorry, guys, I'm a bit obsessive about Kenya. But I've been told Kenya, they built this crappy railway line, and if we don't pay, they're going to get one of our ports in Mombasa. Anyway, that's just a story for another day. Now, this guy, um, so President Edgar Lungu, he visited Chinese companies while he was in China. Not only have you, you, have you lost Zesco, the electricity company, you've lost your media company. He was, at, he actually had the nerve 
after all these guys, man. He actually had the nerve to go um, visiting Chinese companies and he received a grant of a further $30 million for the Lusaka East Multi-Facility Economic Zone Electrification Project, whatever that means. <sighs> So these guys can give you like high blood pressure, man. It's crazy. And um, so he, President Edgar Lungu, he came to power basically um, at Zambia signed at 8 billion. When he came to power, Zambia signed at 8 billion um, finance, Chinese loans in financing. Now over 5 billion of this hasn't been added to the total. Now that's what Zambia is claiming. They're claiming they haven't received 5 billion or they haven't been able to account for 5 billion dollars of the 8 billion. Although China says it was dispersed, it was released. And get this, the finance ministry um, doesn't even have the manpower to police and monitor and disburse the funds. And the financial penalties, because I told you, a lot of these deals are done in secret. We don't know. So the financial penalties of actually backing out of a Chinese deal are worse than the savings of them just going through with the project till its completion. So a lot of contracts have been signed in secret. It's a problem. We don't know what our governments have done. And that's why I, I am telling you, in the next few years, because, you know, the next election for Zambia is, I think, 2020, somewhere there. You're going to see a lot of African governments toppling. A lot of African governments toppling because they have sold our souls to the devil, literally. Just check out how, you know, Zambia, by the way, Zambia has been allowing Chinese immigrants to come in since 1964. And now, after all this happened, the Chinese have even taken a road. The main, one of the main roads that's even on the national map of Zambia. Check in, they put, they just, they just took a road that appears on the map. You can look, you can Google freaking Zambia right now and you'll see that road and the Chinese have just blocked it off. Like they own the country. This is total madness. Seriously, what are our politicians doing? Yo, yo, young Africans, we need to get it together. Like seriously, we need to get it together. We need to arise. We need to get out of our stupor, our slumber, our coma, whatever it is. We need to stop feeling sorry of us, you know, for ourselves and just arise, man. And fight for what is ours. I mean, this is what our grandparents fought for independence for. Many died and were tortured. And you know what? So not only have a lot of um, contracts been signed in secret, but us, we don't know what our governments have signed off. And in Zambia, so the, Zambia has one of the longest relationships with China among African countries. It started in 1964, five months after independence is when this relationship started. And China has been given uncontrolled access to Zambian resources by overborrowing and allowing Chinese unfiltered emigration. And it's reached such a, 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 a high tension level. And I'd love it if my Zambian brothers and sisters who watch my show would just even expound, share your story, share your testimony, guys. It's reached such an uncontrollable level that now the Chinese have even moved into, you know, the African neighborhoods and they're creating tension. They're even selling maize on the streets. So here in Africa, you know, we have guys like, so when you're stuck in traffic and stuff in the major cities, guys will be selling everything from aprons to knickers, you know, undies, <laughs> to handkerchiefs, to water, to crisps. Now, I can imagine seeing Chinese people doing that business. Imagine seeing Chinese on the side of the road, you know, roasting maize, and it's becoming a problem. And in fact, I was reading, there's been such a high influx of Chinese to Zambia since 2015 that many believe like many I actually have actually started thinking this was Chinese government driven. Of course they're happy for their people to be, you know, ex em to emigrate and take over and colonize. They're happy for that. And then when these guys commit crimes, because a lot of them have committed crimes, and there's this brilliant article um, from Lusaka Times, which talked about the various crimes have, that have been committed. Um, the Chinese, like, so the, a lot of corrupt Chinese have moved to Zambia. A lot of thugs and criminals who are into corrupt deals. So corruption has re reached epic proportions in Zambia. And when the government tries to call out the Chinese, what happens? The Chinese government says, call oh, off! Oh. Don't touch my people. Don't touch my people. It's crazy. It's madness. It's nuts. 
And you know, it's become such a problem because contractors are moving, traders, wholesalers, farmers, manufacturers, importers, exporters, and criminals who want to seize the vast resources of Zambia and are looking for an escape route from poverty because China just came out of the, being a third world country. And you know, it's even become common now for people to say China first, Zambia last. Imagine. Imagine. So, you know, a lot of Zambians have been complaining because Chinese have been allowed to acquire large tracts of land. So there's little land left for Zambians. You guys, you, you're thinking it's a joke when I say Zambia is now a Chinese colony. Um, there's been a lot of loss of employment opportunities because they're bringing everyone, cooks, bakers, electricians who learn online, engineers who learn online. Um, they've brought a lot of lawlessness and corruption. They're crowding out Zambian SMEs because they're even doing the small business of even smelling maize on the streets. And they're racist. And a lot of Zambians have complained about the races, racism and the environmental degradation. They're even in, in Zambian markets. <laughs> you know where the Zambians now you go, you, you sell your vegetables and your fruits. They're even there selling fruits and vegetables and competing with Zambians. It's shame on the Zambian government. Shame, shame, shame on President Edgar Lungu or whatever his name is. Shame on him. And the sad thing is, because of all the loans that have signed and because of the defaulting, future Chinese generations will be entitled to Zambia's precious resources. So the children that have not even been born will be born into a neo-colonial China. Might as well call, you know, Zambia a colony of China. It's a mess. And something needs to happen. Imagine something needs to happen. Guys, we need to awaken. We need to get out of our stupor, get out of our problems. Zambia, you guys need a revolution. You guys need a revolution, man. You guys need something. You guys need to awaken, aren't you? Are you just going to stand by and let this happen? Anyway, guys my first show back and I'm already like so emotional um, I need to talk more about what is happening um, just with China in general and why guys the, the, the third world war is coming the third world war is almost upon us 